Offshore dispatching. Holy, is this becoming a hot topic. So Canadian and US trucking companies are looking elsewhere to open up their dispatch offices and backend offices. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what's happening both in Canada and in the US when it comes to employees. Why does it make sense and why it does not make sense to open up offshore offices? The problems that both Canadian and US trucking companies are having. We're going to talk about the cost savings behind opening an offshore office. And lastly, we're going to talk about why I haven't considered it as of yet. So let's get to it. Hey guys, look what I built. Company drivers, owner operators, lease operators, small fleet owners, or anybody thinking of coming into our industry, this channel is for you. Make sure you're a subscriber to this channel and hit that bell notification so you can keep up to date on the latest information on North American trucking. So over the last couple of years, especially in the last six to eight months, it has been extremely hard to recruit anybody for an office position. So let's talk about a couple of problems that we're having in our industry. So number one, office employees. So it is extremely hard over the last two years to hire office employees, especially entry level positions. So positions that we used to hire and pay about $35 or $40,000, we're talking about admin assistance, we're talking about uh, you know accounts receivable, accounts payable. These used to be extremely easy positions to fill. And we used to fill them for about $40,000, $42,000. Today, you are looking at around $50,000, $55,000 for the exact same position. Now, it's not like you have a lineup or you have a list of candidates to choose from. It's no longer you're doing the interview for the candidate, it's the candidate doing the interview for you. So a lot of questions that we get asked is, what do you have to offer us? What kind of vacations do I have? How many holidays? How many sick days? So it is extremely hard to recruit somebody who has their list of what they're looking for in an ideal employer. So the situation has kind of reversed on us. So that's point number one. Now let's get into the newer generation. So the newer generation just doesn't want to work. I don't know where they get their money from, probably from our government, but I don't know what it is about them, but nobody wants to work. Nobody needs money. Somehow they all have money and all they want to do all day long is freaking dance and make TikToks. <laughs> Problem number three that we're having is the cost of living is just outrageous here in the GTA. It is nearly impossible for any young couple to buy a house. It's impossible for anybody to pretty much do anything. The cost of food, the cost of living, rental, everything has gone up and skyrocketed. So the middle class, the lower class really suffers and they suffer a lot. And there's really no point of going to work when you're going to only make 40 or $50,000. Because if I am a young couple and I work for 40 or $50,000, my Childcare benefits goes down literally to almost zero. I don't get any subsidy from the government. I really get zero help from anybody. Where if I don't work, I get all these tax benefits. My child daycare is paid for full. I get my child tax benefits, which is I think at the lowest bracket, bracket around seven to $750 per child that you get here in Canada, which is outrageous. So there's really no incentive for people to get entry level jobs here in Canada. That's just what I feel. So those are just three reasons of why it's extremely hard to recruit here in the GTA. Now I hear it's not just here in the GTA, it's all over Canada. And I hear the US is having pretty much the same problems over there. When we're talking about entry level positions, when we're talking about dispatchers, office employees, when we're talking about admin assistants, when we're talking about bookkeepers, when we're talking about sales reps, these positions can be easily done. And COVID has taught us that we can do this stuff from home. So I am very against or was very against with employees working from home because I think feel like their productivity is just not the same when they're in the office. But COVID has taught me otherwise. So when they're here in our office, we have about 50, 55 employees. And during COVID, about 40 of them went home to work. Now the other 15, it wasn't like they were forced to work from here. They just preferred to be here over at home with their wives and kids. So the ones that work, the 40 people that work from home, now you start wondering to yourself, you start thinking, well, if they're working from home and now they don't want to come back to the office, so they are working from home. So you think about it and you think to yourself, why in the world are you paying rates here in the GTA, which is equivalent to employing people in Illinois or New York? And you start thinking to yourself, why in the world would I hire employees from here in the GTA when I can hire them from other rural areas, which means I can pay them a much lower salary. So if anyways, they're working from home and anyways, we had to invest in the monitoring devices for them to work from home, then why in the world would we hire people here in the greater Toronto area where the rate 
rates for employees are through the roof. So then you start going to other parts of Canada. But if you're already doing that, then why in the world would you recruit from Canada when there are other parts of the world that you can recruit from for a fraction of the cost? So that takes me to my next point. So if we as companies have already invested in the monitoring devices for people to work remote, our employees do not want to come back to the office because even when we're recruiting new talent, one of the first questions that people ask is, can I work from home? Well, the answer is no, you cannot work from home because if you were able to work from home, then why in the world would I recruit somebody from Canada or the US where our monthly salaries are extremely expensive and we can pretty much almost get the exact same thing from other countries for a fraction of the cost. I mean, trucking companies have really been hit with a lot lately. And I'll tell you from my perspective what I've seen over the last six months, over the last year. So number one, recession. So huge, huge recession in freight rates. Lanes that we used to service at $3 a mile or $2.80 a mile, today the, the going rate is about $2.40 or 245 per mile with the cost of fuel the fuel is just outrageous ever since the russia ukraine war somehow there is absolutely no handle on the fuel prices that are out there sometimes it goes up sometimes it goes down there's absolutely no handle of it and i wouldn't be surprised if it went up tomorrow by another dollar a gallon or if it went down by 50 cents per liter or a gallon now we can also add to the list the cost to equipment so literally we're paying about 50 percent more so we used to buy trailers brand new for forty five thousand dollars Today, we're ordering them for about $70,000. We used to buy reefers for $100,000. Today, we're buying reefers for about $140,000. Brand new trucks, they used to be $180,000. Now, we're paying about $240,000 for brand new trucks. Get where I'm going with this? Extremely hard for trucking companies. Over the last year, it's just been brutal. Now, when the freight rates are $4 or $5 a mile, who cares? Whatever. Nobody cares. But when the freight rates are really coming down, and they're coming down hard, and every single news article that I read is about recession, about bankruptcy, season about layoffs that is a problem and it gets you to start thinking okay where else can we save so what is the cost savings I'll try to put this in perspective for you so let's take an office employee we'll take somebody who works in accounts receivable so all they all they do all day long is they call on outstanding invoices and request for payment so there is usually somebody sitting in front of a computer they have all of their outstanding invoices and they'll call people for payment now that position here in the GTA will probably cost you about fifty thousand dollars and i think pretty much the same salaries in the us probably 50 55 thousand dollars the exact same salary in a third world country will probably cost about a fraction of the cost actually to give you real concrete numbers will probably cost you about a thousand dollars a month now that same $50,000 here in Canada is gonna cost you about $4,200 plus all the add-ons that you're paying for the CPP, EU, and EI. You're probably looking at around $45, $4,700. So you have a $1,000 payment without all these labor laws and without all these shenanigans that the Canadian government always tackles on to us, but that's just my personal opinion. But here you have the difference between a $4,500 salary and a $1,000 salary for the same position for somebody who's doing calling or collections which is in your accounts receivable. So that's just one position. Let's talk about dispatchers. Any good dispatcher today in the market is probably worth about $60,000 and it goes all the way up to about $100,000, $120,000. Now that same $60,000 salary, you could be paying pretty much the same rates in other countries. Now, when you have multiple dispatchers, so this is where it starts multiplying. So when you have one person in accounting and two people in dispatching and three people in sales and another two people in safety and compliance that really are working from home, say they work in a remote, environment does it really matter if they're here in Canada or if they're abroad as long as they work the same hours would anybody even pick up on it if they're fluent in English with all this cost saving it's really starting to get me thinking should I or shouldn't I but let me tell you a little bit about why I haven't until today maybe I can get your opinion on what you guys think so here are what I've been offered over the last year there's been about four companies that have knocked on our doors and have asked us if we were interested in opening a remote office so the first one came in from Ukraine and that was about two years ago we were offered to open up a offshore office in Ukraine. The second one, about a year ago, somebody gave us the idea of opening up an office in Albania. The third one we have, a, we were offered in Honduras. And the fourth one was in the Philippines. So with anyone opening up an office in any one of those four locations, we 
would automatically save us literally about 80% on everybody's salary here in comparison when you take a salary over there versus a salary over here. So what am I afraid of? So really, in all honesty, I am afraid about control. So when I see people here in the office, I feel like, I, but I guess it's subconsciously, I guess it's something with myself, but I guess I'm maybe of an older generation where I feel like when I see people here on a daily basis, there's more control over them. The second thing I'm, of, I'm afraid of is proper training. So here, if I have an issue or if I have a problem or if I'm looking to train a couple of people, I will bring them into a boardroom and I will train them on how to do certain tasks. Whereas if they were in a different country, then I would have to invite them to a virtual meeting. So I am still not 100%, even though I use the virtual meetings literally every single day, I still don't know about how to train people offshore in a virtual meeting. The second, the third thing is a language barrier. So this is a big one for me. So imagine my driver is trying to call dispatch and somebody from a foreign country or somebody from a different country picks up the phone. It's hard enough that the dispatchers here might confuse a border crossing or might confuse directions on how to get somewhere or to help out a driver. But can you imagine a foreigner that picks up the phone who has absolutely no idea about our geography uh, and trying to explain to our driver who some of them also have a language barrier a problem? That actually might be a really good scene for our shorts. So yeah, so the language barrier is definitely a problem for me. Maybe something I just need to overcome, but I feel like that is going to be a problem. So what do you guys think about offshore dispatchers or offshore offices? Now, I know that a lot of companies out there do have the offshore offices, especially trucking companies. Now, if you are working for a company that has one, I would love to hear your feedback in the comments below on how do you feel about it? Do you feel do you even feel that somebody is not in the office? Do you even feel or do you know the difference when a offshore dispatcher picks up the phone versus somebody who's local? I'd love to get your take on it. Let me know if you guys learned something from this video. Put the comments down below. Make sure you like the channel and subscribe. I'm Ronan, R-O-N-E-N, and I'll catch you in my next video. Thank you.